Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on all our weaknesses, and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson, a reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed nor shall any be missing says the lord the days are surely coming says the lord when i will raise up for david a righteous one and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Thank you. 
before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he may, might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death <coughs> that hostility through him. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a des deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, but he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. 
gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. In today's gospel, the disciples have come back to Jesus after being sent out to do the hard work of ministry, and they're proud of what they've done. They're eager to tell Jesus how they've been acting like him. They're becoming like minor celebrities in Nazareth. They fancy themselves shepherds, leaders among men. They've been preaching and teaching like him, gathering the flocks. And Jesus hears all that the disciples have done and all they've been through, and he invites them to rest. But they can't seem to find rest. They don't even have time for a lunch break, let alone a day off. Finally, they tried to get away from the crowds by traveling by boat up the Galilean coast. But the crowds outrun them on foot. They beat them to their destination and are waiting there for them when they arrive on shore. You can imagine the disciples' frustration at this sight. They're worn out. They gave all they could and they were promised the day off. And now, instead, they're looking at another day of unpaid over time. But Jesus sees these same crowds gathered there on the shore. And like the disciples, he too is human. He too is weary. He too is in need of a day off. Mark says, Jesus had compassion for the crowds. From within him, this tireless abundance, abundant compassion arises because he sees they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. This image, this metaphor of the shepherd is so important that the church meditates on it at least once a year during the season of Easter on Good Shepherd Sunday. But as if to say once a year is not enough, just a few weeks later, just a few weeks after Good Shepherd Sunday, here we are today. The lectionary asks us again to revisit this image of the shepherd, to really consider what it is we're saying every time we repeat these familiar words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We want many things. If we tried, we might be able to recollect the many directions our heart has moved this morning, in the last hour, but surely we'd struggle if we tried to recall all the things we've reached for, everything we convince ourselves we want and need, even in a single day. We would struggle to name, to articulate all the desires that deep down animate and shape our lives, that pull us here and there, all the things that come to define us. The psalmist begins, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. This is the work of the good shepherd. The work of the Good Shepherd is to lead me through dangerous places, through dark ravines in the dead of night. And his way leads through these narrow places, out into the open, to green pastures under a wide, starry sky, hidden blessings and quiet moments that come even on my worst days, even after sleepless nights even at the strangest, most troubling times in life, hidden blessings and quiet moments come. The 
This is the work of the Good Shepherd. There in the midst of it all, the Lord makes me lie down. He makes me unshoulder my burdens, all my wants and fears, all my worries and anxieties. He makes me lie down. I do not lie down. He waits for me to lie down. He waits and waits. <coughs> this also is the work of the Good Shepherd. And when I finally agree to lie down, he leads me beside still waters, the still water of prayer, the abiding presence of God's Spirit. There in the still water, I can see my reflection. I see myself clearly. I see the lines of joy and grief etched on my face. I wash away the tears dried on my cheek. I wash the dirt from my wounds. I get the sleep out of my eyes. I know deep beneath my reflection is all the cold, refreshing water I could ever hope to drink. The water deep and unmoving and quiet. This is the work of the Good Shepherd. He leads me beside still waters and he revives my soul. The psalmist says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In stillness and prayer, God our Lord restores us so that we may continue to walk together with others and for others on this right path. The Spirit of the Lord is not content to leave us enclosed within ourselves. He unmakes the fences around our hearts. He tears them down so that we might truly love once more, so that we might show one another compassion instead of suspicion and fear. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, the psalmist says. With the Lord as my shepherd, what evil shall I fear? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. This is not our doing. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You who were once far off through the blood of Christ have been brought near. This is not something I can do on my own. This is not my work to accomplish. I will fear no evil. This is the work of the Good Shepherd. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We want many things, O God. We have our hearts set on many things, but when we seek after you, we are not in want. We shall fear no evil. For you are with us, Lord. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. In the life of prayer to which you call us, gracious God, Lead us beside still waters. Whoever we are, whoever we think we are, let us know your peace. Wherever we are, let us find you nearby. For you spread a table before us in the presence of all that troubles us. In the midst of our every want and our every trial, you spread a table before us. In spite of all our loneliness and our every fear, you spread a table before us. For us. You have anointed our heads with oil, and our cup is running over. This is your work, Lord God, and we will give you thanks, saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And no matter where I go, no matter where I am led, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Joyfully reaffirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and our Southern Church. We acknowledge all the baptism for forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection today and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all the people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop and our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Here. Hear us, Lord, for we are your seeds of grace. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will be repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be glad in you. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning. Welcome to you all. It's nice to be here with you today. We have the air conditioning, even though it's not over there in the big church. And uh, I was just thinking a minute ago, you all have your own pews over there. And now I see you're getting your own tables in here. I can still find you in the room somewhere. Uh, table. So anyway, I thank you for being flexible because uh, as we know in scripture, blessed are the flexible because they don't get bit out of shape, right? So, uh, we're flexible uh, in our worship together. And I, I think there's even some really uh, wonderful graces and joys that come with worshiping in this informal space. So I'm thankful for it. And I hope you'll uh, stick around afterwards in here in the air conditioning for some uh, fellowship and lemonade after the worship is over. Uh, there are announcements in your bulletin. Vacation Bible School, our one day Vacation Bible School is coming up this coming Saturday. We still uh, are accepting uh, registrations which are on our website. So if you know of a young person, you would enjoy spending a wonderful uh, Saturday with us. And we're going to learn all sorts of things and have a lot of fun. And it'll be uh, just five hours this coming Sunday. Uh, and if you'd like to help with any ways, uh, with that in any ways, please speak with one of us after worship. Also, school is uh, back to school is just around the corner. We're collecting school supplies for the students at South Columbus Elementary. Um, maybe you might not be aware of it, but children don't also always go to school with all the supplies they need. And uh, it's a great joy to be able to help a young student get a good start in their school year. And so we're collecting school supplies that we will take to the school and in bulk and they will deliver, uh, uh, distribute them to the students that really need a good start and need these uh, supplies. So there's a list of things we need in your bulletin. There's baskets at the front of the church to collect uh, the things. You can give us a cash donation. In the email that went out on Friday, there's also an email link where you can go to amazon.com and order the things that are on our wish list and have them sent directly to the church. So we've made it as easy as we can for you to contribute. And I hope you'll give generously to a young child who really needs some help. Are there any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offered and sacrificed to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, <laughs> resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, to serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your <laughs> eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father, Amen. Lord, 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 Yes, 
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith to thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual truth in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for the hymn.
Thank you. 